Welcome to Terminology in Healthcare and Public Health Settings, Cardiovascular System. The objectives for this unit, Cardiovascular System, are to define, understand, and correctly pronounce medical terms related to the cardiovascular system, describe common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is also referred to as the circulatory system. Its primary functions include distributing blood to all areas of the body, delivering needed substances to cells, and removing wastes. This slide shows the anatomy of the cardiovascular system. As you can see, the organs of this system include the heart, the arteries, the capillaries, and the veins. A variety of specialists treat diseases of the cardiovascular system. Cardiologists treat diseases of the heart. Vascular surgeons treat some diseases of the arteries and veins. And neurologists treat strokes. The heart is located in the mediastinum, located to the left side of the chest and directly behind the sternum, which is the breastbone. The heart is about the size of a fist and is shaped like an upside-down pear. The heart has a right and left side. The heart is divided into its right and left sides by a wall called the septum. The right side of the heart delivers blood to the lungs where carbon dioxide, or CO2, is exchanged for oxygen. The left side of the heart then pumps oxygenated blood to the body. The heart is divided into four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. The two atria are known as the left and right upper chambers. Blood returns to the atria in the heart through the venous systems. The two ventricles are known as the left and right lower chambers. They are the pumping chambers, meaning they pump blood away from the heart. Blood exits the ventricles into arteries to be circulated throughout the body. You might want to think about blood vessels as the pipes that circulate blood through the body. Blood vessels are divided into three categories, arteries, capillaries, and veins. Arteries are large, thick-walled vessels which can dilate or constrict. Arteries carry blood away from the heart to the rest of the body or to the lungs. All arteries carry bright red blood that contains a high level of oxygen.
capillaries are a network of tiny, thin-walled blood vessels. They form the connection between arteries and veins. Capillaries reach each cell in the body. It is in the capillaries that oxygen and nutrients diffuse out of the blood, and carbon dioxide and wastes diffuse into the blood. Veins carry blood back towards the heart from either the lungs or the cells and tissues of the body. All veins carry dark red-purple blood that has a low level of oxygen. The first major condition of the cardiovascular system that we will discuss is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is a disease in which plaque builds up inside your arteries. Plaque is a sticky substance made of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substances found in the blood. Over time, the plaque hardens and causes narrowing of your arteries. This in turn limits the flow of oxygen-rich blood to your body and can lead to serious problems. These problems include coronary artery disease, carotid artery disease, and peripheral arterial disease. In coronary artery disease, the arteries that supply blood to your heart become blocked. When blocked, you can suffer angina, which is the medical term for chest pain. You could even have a heart attack. If you have carotid artery disease, the arteries that supply blood to your brain become blocked. When they are blocked, you can suffer a stroke. And if you have peripheral arterial disease, the arteries in your arms, legs, and pelvis become blocked. When they are blocked, you can suffer from numbness, pain, and sometimes infections.
Atherosclerosis usually doesn't cause symptoms until it severely narrows or totally blocks an artery. Doctors use physical examination, imaging, and other diagnostic tests to see if you have it. Treatments for atherosclerosis include medicines and medical procedures or surgery. Lifestyle changes can also help. These include following a healthy diet, getting regular exercise, maintaining a healthy weight, quitting smoking, and managing stress. The next cardiovascular condition that we'll discuss is a stroke. A stroke occurs when the blood supply to part of your brain is interrupted or severely reduced, depriving brain tissue of oxygen and food. Within minutes, brain cells begin to die. A stroke is a medical emergency. Prompt treatment is crucial. Early action can minimize brain damage and potential complications. The good news is that strokes can be treated and prevented, and many fewer Americans now die of stroke than was the case even 15 years ago. Better control of major stroke risk factors, high blood pressure, smoking, and high cholesterol is likely responsible for the decline. There are two kinds of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. Almost 90% of strokes are ischemic strokes. They occur when the arteries to your brain are narrowed or blocked, causing severely reduced blood flow called ischemia. Lack of blood flow deprives your brain cells of oxygen and nutrients, and cells may begin to die within minutes. The other kind of stroke is called a hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhage is the medical term for bleeding. Hemorrhagic stroke occurs when a blood vessel in your brain leaks or ruptures. Brain hemorrhages can result from a number of conditions that affect your blood vessels, including uncontrolled high blood pressure, hypertension, and weak spots in your blood vessel walls, aneurysms. Many strokes, also known as transient ischemic attacks, or TIAs, occur when the blood supply to the brain is briefly interrupted. Many TIAs last less than five minutes. Like an ischemic stroke, a TIA occurs when a clot or debris blocks blood flow to part of your brain. Unlike a stroke, however, which involves a more prolonged lack of blood supply and causes permanent tissue damage, a TIA doesn't usually leave lasting effects because the blockage is temporary. There are numerous symptoms which occur when you are having a stroke. Strokes can result in a variety of neurologic deficits, such as sensory, motor, or cognition. For example, you may experience symptoms such as sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body. You may have sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding speech. In addition, you may have sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes. You may also have sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination. And finally, you may have a sudden severe headache with no known cause. Treatment is completely dependent upon the cause and type of stroke. Strokes can be traumatic, ischemic, hemorrhagic, etc. Drug therapy with blood thinners is the most common treatment for both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. Rehabilitation therapy helps individuals overcome disabilities that result from stroke damage. Hypertension is the next cardiovascular condition that we'll discuss. Hypertension is often referred to as high blood pressure.
Hypertension results in damage to organs by consistently causing high blood pressure in vessels of individual organs. It is typically called a silent killer because many people have it but don't know it. Hypertension can cause life-threatening illnesses like kidney problems, stroke, heart failure, blindness, and heart attacks. You can control high blood pressure through healthy lifestyle habits and taking medication if needed. The diagnosis of hypertension is based upon your blood pressure readings. Blood pressure readings use two numbers, the systolic and diastolic pressures. Systolic blood pressure is the pressure when the heart beats while pumping blood. Diastolic blood pressure, in contrast, is the pressure when the heart is at rest between beats. The resulting pressure readings are usually written one above or before the other. A reading of 120 over 80 or lower is considered a normal blood pressure. A reading of 140 over 90 or higher is considered a high blood pressure. A reading between 120 and 139 for the top number or between 80 and 89 for the bottom number indicates you have prehypertension. You may be wondering, when are we going to talk about heart attacks? A heart attack is called a myocardial infarction and abbreviated as MI. Heart attacks are one of the most well-known and common medical problems. In fact, someone in the United States has a myocardial infarction every 34 seconds. The symptoms of an MI include chest discomfort, such as feeling pressure, squeezing, or pain. Sometimes, people experience shortness of breath and discomfort in the upper body, either in the arms, shoulder, neck, or back. Another symptom of a heart attack is nausea accompanied by vomiting, dizziness, lightheadedness, and sweating. Most heart attacks happen when a clot in the coronary artery blocks the supply of blood and oxygen to the heart. Myocardial infarction is caused by the heart receiving too little oxygenated blood supply, which results in organ damage. A blockage that is not treated within a few hours causes the affected heart muscle to die. Sometimes a myocardial infarction leads to an irregular heartbeat called an arrhythmia that causes a severe decrease in the pumping function of the heart. Treatment for cardiac arrhythmias include medications, a variety of cardiac devices, and cardiac ablation. Here are some key word parts for the cardiovascular system along with their meanings. In the third column, you can see some of the medical terms that we can create by combining word parts. You should return to the online medical dictionary to hear the pronunciation and become familiar with the meaning of the created terms. David is rushed to the doctor after complaining of having a really bad headache. His wife also tells David's doctor that her husband is feeling confused, having trouble speaking and has numbness of the left side of his face. These symptoms are indicative of atherosclerosis, stroke, myocardial infarction. Did you guess stroke? Remember that the symptoms of a stroke include sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially on one side of the body, sudden confusion, trouble speaking or understanding speech, Sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes. Sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance or coordination. Sudden severe headache with no known cause.
This concludes cardiovascular system. In summary, we defined medical terms related to the cardiovascular system, and we described common diseases and conditions with an overview of various treatments related to the cardiovascular system.